Right, so the weather is dire. Blowing a gale, windy, no flying for me for a while. So, um, and I've kind of reached close to the end of the tuning. I, I'm going to be doing a bit more as I, I described around filter settings. But uh, one of the things I was really interested in was the, the poor vibration performance on the y-axis in particular at, at low throttle. And so one of my suspicions about this is it's some sort of frame resonance. So uh, what better thing to do when the weather's bad than to try and test for frame resonance. So resonance, sorry. So here's my setup. Let me just expand this. And so you can see I've got the copter here. And what, what you can't quite see is it's sitting on a vibration speaker. So you can see it's kind of a bit wobbly there. So this is a, a speaker that you can actually normally uh, put against a pane of glass or something like that and it projects sound into the thing it's connected to and I've got it connected to a little Bluetooth um, amplifier there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a range of frequencies uh, into the vibration speaker and then use the FFT function to track those frequencies and uh, um, see what's what. Now I've, I've done this with flight controllers before. No, normally I would do this to test the resonant frequency of foam in a flight controller but I've never done it with a whole frame before but I you know the frame is small enough that it's just possible. So uh, let's see see how we get on. So I'll show you um, how I'm going to set this up. So let's uh, switch this guy on. And connect. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do is going to enable FFT. So this enables uh, onboard FFT uh, and you can use this to drive the harmonic notch. Now I'm not going to do that because the uh, response from the uh, C's is far more accurate but I can still use this to detect frequencies in the aircraft. So if I write that out parameters again. So I'm interested in quite a wide range of frequencies here. So I've got the setup here for FFT. So I'm going to um, set min and max hertz to cover the full range of frequencies. So I'm going to go from I'm going to go from five. So I want to be below that 20 hertz range. I'm going to go up to a kilohertz, uh, which should be fine. My back end rate is 200 two kilohertz for the gyro, so maybe I'll just make that slightly less than a kilohertz, so 950. Um, so that covers the complete range. And uh, the size of the window is pretty good, but I'm interested in accuracy here, so I think I'm going to increase that to a window of 128. So these are not settings I would necessarily fly with, but they're a good way of, of looking at frequency data um, and let's write those out yep and then I'm just gonna uh, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is switch on disarmed logging because I want to log while the thing is not armed and uh, should be okay, so I'll write that out. 
going to reboot the flight controller. Reconnect. And that should be good. So I don't know whether we've got the message. Uh, Okay, so the lowest frequency it can get to is 15.6 hertz. Okay, so 5 hertz is a, is a poor choice for me. So let me make this 16 hertz. Uh, so the way FFTs work is that they're bins of frequencies. They're not individual frequencies. So I'm going to set that to... 16 hertz, reboot again, reconnect, let's see, and there we can see the FFT is calibrated and the bins are 7.8 hertz wide, so that's good, okay. So I should be ready to run my test. Okay, so we're ready to go. So um, what I've got is this, so I've got my iPhone and I'm using something called Multitone Generator Pro. I don't know whether you can see that, probably not very well. Uh, and this allows you to select, I've selected a sign sweep from 5 hertz to 1000 hertz over 10 seconds and uh, what I'm going to do is switch on disarmed logging I've disabled the FFT that the the batch logging FFT batch logging because otherwise I'll overwhelm the log file so I'm going to switch on disarmed logging there we go so that's switched on so it's logging away I'm now going to do the sweep through the tone generator which you should hear uh, and that seemed to work pretty well. You could hear my phone trying to receive a signal in the background, so that may have dis disturbed things. So I might just do that again, uh, just to make sure. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to switch off disarmed logging. There we go. And then get the log file. So, there we go. Download it right. Let's review this log. Um, Okay, here we go. So let me bring that up on the screen. Okay, so you should be able to see that now. So um, with the FFT settings, all of the FFT data goes into these two buckets here, F tonne 1 and F tonne 2. And so F tonne 1 is kind of a summary of averages, uh, uh, but what I'm interested in is the precise peak data. And so actually we've collected, we, we'll have correct, collected three FFT peaks here, ordered by energy. And so I'm really interested in the first one. Um, so if we look at peak X, uh, and you'll see peak X is uh, not very interesting. And the reason is because the speaker is only going up and down. And so actually what we want is the Y gyro data. 
So now you can see here we've got a beautiful sine sweep. Now it's only going up to 400 odd hertz and I think that may simply be because it's not detectable above, above that. And so if we zoom in on this, so here's our nice FFT information going from uh, well down here somewhere up to here. What we want to look at is the energy for this. So this is what this EN, what EN bucket stands for. So this is the energy that the FFT uh, engine determined. So if I switch on the energy and you see it's a bit of a mess there, so let's zoom out. Okay, so here's, um, that's, that's, I think the graph has got a bit confused. So let's try that again. Peak Y, energy Y. There we go, that's what I wanted. Okay, so, um, so here's the interesting thing. So let's go here. So what you can see is that there's a massive spike in energy around here and then a smaller spike in energy around here. And um, although we expect there to be, you know, energy is obviously related to frequency somewhat, uh, this is clearly not, there's not a sort of proportional response here. And so this big spike in energy here is likely to be the frame resonance. And you can see that that's at about eight and a half hertz. So at eight and a half hertz, we have a massive spike of frame resonance. And then we have another one here that is at 12 just about 12 hertz so eight and a half hertz here oh, hang on <laughs> reading the wrong scale <laughs> this is energy here in in uh, um, uh, uh, mystical units which i won't describe to you uh, but they are it, it's a sort of power spectral density the hertz is here so this is so this is actually a big spike at a uh, hundred and well this is 160 so it's about 170 about 170 hertz something like that which is just above I think that's just above the hover frequency. So that would expect there. So there is a lot of frame resonance going on just above the hover frequency. That, so that kind of explains what we're seeing. And then we're seeing another spike at 200 and 250 hertz. So that's clearly not a harmonic. This is clearly um, a, a resonance spike as well. So we've basically got uh, I really want a ruler. Um, I'm sure I can do the, this in Mission Planner, but I'm never quite sure. So, uh, yeah, I have to figure that out. But anyway, I'm sure I can show the data under there. So basically, we've got a big spike at 160 something hertz and a smaller spike at 250 hertz. And so what I might well do is put a static notch on this big spike here, because the problem here is that this spike exists whatever the RPM is. So as soon as you go through this spike, you get a bit, you know, so, so you kind of, as soon as you get any kind of resonance that hits this frequency, the whole frame is just gonna vibrate and put lots of noise into the flight controller. And so a static notch, and you see it's very, it's, it's a very, I need to measure this very carefully because you can see it's a very narrow spike. So I should be able to put quite a thin notch on that. 
you know, only a, only a few um, hertz either way, and so it's not going to affect anything else. But I think it might make a big difference to the uh, the copter's performance overall. So that's uh, that's what I will try. So that's a great experiment. Really pleased with that, and I'll probably I'll, I'll probably tidy up just the the details that I find here, and then we will try another tune with a static notch, which I think would be great. Okay, just a quick update here. I've sort of figured out my mission plan and uh, um, in capability. So I actually right click and say show point values. And then I can hover over this here. And you can see that's 167 hertz. And you can also see that the range goes from 177 to 157. So it's only a 20 hertz range on 167 hertz. And then this one, uh, not quite sure what's going on there because that's not. Go two three one two three six. It's about two three six, and the, the width is a bit wider here. It's from two oh six to about there two six eight. So about thirty hertz either side of two three six. Yeah. Okay, so we've got 167 and 236, uh, and um, I can only put one static notch on, so I'll definitely go go for this 167 uh, spot, um, uh, which looks great. So I shall try that. <laughs> 